Hello and welcome to the Crochet Cakes YouTube channel. The last time we were here, I promised that I would do a Japan yarn haul video. So that is what we are going to do today. Now, um, this is a, there's yarn, there's a lot of yarn. So I decided to break this yarn haul video into two and we're just gonna follow the route we followed when we traveled in Japan. So we're gonna start our journey off in Osaka. But before we begin, I do want to give you a nice warm welcome. I hope you've had a good week. We have to do taxes today, so that that's, that's not good. You know, I just really wish they would send you a letter and say, this is what you owe and you pay it. And you, and you don't have to like, go digging through your archives and second guessing whether or not they're going to come after you because you forgot a couple of 50 cents somewhere. That, anyway, <laughs> enough about taxes. Um, let's just, you know, let's just talk yarn. All right, let's talk yarn. But again, before we really begin, I just wanted to address the elephant in the room. I'm trying a different recording angle and I'm actually recording on my phone, which I don't usually do for the YouTube channel podcast vlog episodes, but I still have not mastered the zoom or the cinematic view on my camera. I don't think I have enough lights for that. So we're on our phone. You can see a lot more of my craft room than you usually can. And right over there, I am blocking my bloom top again. So thank you to those of you that have commented on what you liked about the bloom top, whether you think I should add um, embroidery to it. The few that commented said that as of now, as I'm reading the comments, that it was okay, it didn't need embroidery. I'm still kind of tempted to try it just to see what it would look like. And I've decided that when I do publish the pattern, it will include the original pattern, which was designed for a very light cotton fingering weight yarn. And I do mean almost lace weight. So somewhere between a 10 and a five, if we're talking Aunt Lydia's category. And I will also include this new one with the elixir yarn because I do like the elixir. So as of right now, it's still blocking, but I have gained length and I've gained 32 inch bust. And I think that's what I'm going to get without, you know, stretching it abnormally. Of course, we are talking alpaca and linen, which loosen up over time. So I'm sure the more I keep using and washing this top, the looser of a fit I will get. But for now, I am very happy with how it looks. Sorry, my computer just turned on. Very happy with how it looks. Also, celebration crochet along. Um, the Ravelry thread, oh, as of right now, is a little bit empty. I honestly don't know who of you are participating in the celebration crochet along, but I, I really would like you guys to join in. I planned this crochet along with you in mind just as a way to strengthen our community. And as soon as the Discord goes live, I will let you know on my YouTube, um, like, you know, you have a comment section on YouTube. So if you check the YouTube app from your mobile phone and you go to subscriptions, you'll also get like the posts that your the people you follow have added. So I'll let you know there. I'll definitely let you know on Instagram and I will send out a newsletter. So if you would like to just keep up to date with me, weekly shenanigans, and just learn a little bit more about me and join the newsletter community, then I will leave a direct link to sign up to my newsletter down below. Um, ooh, that's my tea timer. Tea timer is done. Alexa, stop tea timer. Mm, today I am drinking the lemon loaf tea from Tazo. Uh, which is Starbucks brand of tea, I believe. Glazed lemon loaf. Kind of want to eat one now. Anyway, I'm going to let my tea cool a little bit, but we all know that with tea, you either get it hot, boiling, boil, boil your soul so that you feel it in the afterlife, or just tepid or cold. We know. We know those are the three ways we drink tea. Anyway. I want to walk you through my route of yarn shopping. So we start our journey, well we actually landed, if you saw the vlog, we landed in Tokyo. We stayed there for one night um, so that we could rest and recharge and then we boarded the Shinkansen to Osaka. And in Osaka we stayed in Dotonbori, which is kind of like 
the busy downtown street like it's where all the food and stores are located and it's it's a vibe so i'm just gonna say it's a vibe um it's very very busy especially during the weekend there wasn't a time that we woke up in osaka where it wasn't busy well that's a lie you go out into osaka at 7 a.m and that's when people are walking into mcdonald's to uh, drink away their hangover so you know eating nice greasy food which by the way McDonald's in Japan is not as greasy as in the United States like you walk into a McDonald's and it just smells of food it doesn't smell like you are gonna clog your arteries and take away 10 years of your life but I digress my point was that we stayed in Dotonbori. So the yarn stores that I'm gonna to talk to you about, I'm gonna start with the furthest one away, was a 30 minute walk from Dotonbori. And that was Narukawa. And I only have this picture here of the beautiful, colorful cotton yarn displays. Now this yarn store, I believe it's a wholesaler of just thread in general. Um, they have cords, they have threads, they have li some linen, they have undyed cotton, undyed linen, hemp. So all natural fibers, all made in Japan, which was my favorite thing ever. I, I do have to say this is the store that I hold very, very close to my heart because I work a lot with cotton and cotton blend fibers because I live in Florida and it is hot. That is just the weather. Never mind. It's generally hot in Florida. So I tend to work a lot with cottons and uh, although I do work with wool and an example is the top that I am wearing. This is the Vintage Waves top. It is one of my favorite patterns, but I think I say that about every pattern I design. But I design this Vintage Waves top with stash busting in mind. So it uses a combination of a sport weight cotton and sport weight wool, although I have crocheted it with um, fingering weight cotton and fingering weight wool with good results. I just went up a size because I didn't bother to gauge swatch. I knew what was gonna happen. <laughs> I know what my tension is like with fingering weight wool versus um, sport weight wool so there was that experience backed me up a little bit I don't want you to think that I I do not follow my own advice because I do when I'm unsure but this time I was sure anyway I digress the point is I do tend to work with wools but Narukawa just had the most gorgeous jewel toned dyed cotton and I fell in love honestly it was the first yarn store I visited and I absolutely loved it. I kept thinking about this store as I traveled to other yarn stores in Japan, not because the other yarn stores were less worthy of love, but because it's like, you know, your first love, they say you never forget it. Well, this was my first love yarn store in Japan. And right, enough chatting about that, even though I do want to keep talking about it because the colors. I bought this beautiful um, it's showing up a lot yellower on camera than it actually is. So I'm going to try and film some videos of this outside so that it can show up as true to color as possible because it is actually, while there is like some mustard undertones, it looks a lot like olive oil. And I absolutely loved this color. And then as I was working on cleaning my yarn stash and organizing it, I realized that this is very similar to the color olive from Oh Baby Organic Cotton from Lion Brand, that fingering weight yarn, but it is like a shade lighter from that color. And I absolutely loved it. Um, I bought 300 grams. Actually, you they have a scale in the store, which I greatly appreciated. So each of these hanks measured at 102 grams. So I bought a little bit more than, than 300 grams, but I do wish I had bought um, more of this color and more of the other colors because as you can see in the picture, the, they were just... Mm, perfect tea drinking temperature. They were just absolutely beautiful, beautiful colors. So if there is a place I regret not spending more money at, it is Narukawa Yarn Store in Japan. It is actually... I'm going to call it a bit of a hidden gem because we walked for 30 minutes 
and Google Maps said you've arrived and it was just a nondescript building that didn't have any signs, but there was like an entryway. So very skeptically, you know, waiting for somebody to come out and yell, you're not supposed to be here. We walked into it and very helpfully, they had signs and each um, of the floors, that there were seven floors in the building and it said that Narukawa had moved to the seventh floor. So that was very helpful because otherwise I would not have found the store. So if you find yourself in Osaka, in Dotonburi, and you want to search out Narukawa, please remember it's a nondescript building and you ride an elevator to the top and <laughs> you arrive at the yarn store. So don't be very skeptical or afraid like I did. Like, is Google Maps, does it even know I'm in Japan? <laughs> hmm. I'm gonna pause for a little bit of a tea break um, because my tea is at that perfect drinking point where if you just let it cool a little bit more, it'll be tepid. So do I have any plans for this beautiful yarn? Absolutely not, but it's going to be a garment. You guys know me and you guys know it'll be a garment. Now, whether it'll be a crochet garment or a knit garment, I do not yet know, but it'll be beautiful nonetheless. And this is cotton from Japan. It's dyed in Japan and I bought it at a Japanese yarn store. So it's a great, great memory. Um, and it's going to be a beautiful garment. I just know it will. What would you guys make with 300 grams of cotton yarn? This is um, fingering weight cotton, by the way. Um, I saw a lot of cotton, fingering weight cotton and lace weight, like true, very, very lace weight yarn, the type that you would use probably for a 1.75 millimeter crochet hook or less. So anyway, I am thrilled with this. And of course, I could not just visit one yarn store in Osaka because my husband found um, two that were walking distance. There were probably more because honestly, now that I'm home and I Google yarn stores in Osaka, I get a lot more than I actually did when I was in Japan Googling yarn stores in Osaka. So I'm a bit miffed, but next up in the evening, I think it was actually the same day that I went to Narukawa because that was our last full day in Osaka. I went to another yarn store. Now this one had a very different vibe. Um, it had two floors and the top floor, I believe that's where they would hold classes and it was just looked like an office space, but it was full to the brim of yarn. And then on the first floor, just as soon as you walk in, there is yarn everywhere. Like from the bottom lowest shelf to the highest shelf, it's just stock full of all the yarns ever. And then the middle of the store also had like these um, big stainless steel carts. You know the ones I'm talking about? They were full of yarn as well. <laughs> like it was, it was, it was honestly a tad bit overwhelming with the amount of yarn that was held in this space. It was pretty big for a yarn store, I would say, and it just, it had everything. Yeah, it, it just had everything. Floor to ceiling, and this store is Masuzakiya. So I'm gonna hold the bag up because I... So this is the yarn store. I'll put a link to the yarn store down below because they did give me a business card with a QR code. They are on Instagram if you are curious. So I'm also gonna find them on Instagram and put that link down there for you because as the bag said, knitting yarn of the world, it, it was absolutely, it held everything. Um, it held European yarns, and Japanese brands, and it just had every single possible fiber imaginable, you found it in that store. Also, curiously enough, even though I Googled yarn stores, um, when you walked into stores, they would say knit shop. Um, so they cater it, they just call it knit shops because it's not that they catered to only knitters, they had the tulip crochet hooks, which 
was like my one purchase that I was gonna put all the money down because I really wanted a set of the red tulip crochet hooks. I didn't find them. There is a tulip yarn factory, but it was uh, very much to the south of where I was staying. So if I ever get back to Japan, I will definitely email them and set up an appointment to visit the Tulip Yarn Factory so that I can show you guys. Or if you make it to Japan before me, you should do that. Yeah. Mm. Take me on a tour of the Tulip, did I say yarn? <laughs> tulip Hook Factory. It's hooks and needles. They, they make all sorts of things. Anyway, so this store, uh, they call it a knit shop, as I said, and it was full to the brim of yarn. I, I honestly didn't even know what to buy and <laughs> seemed like to be walking around in the days and it's like, yes, I am on cloud 10,000 right now. There's so much yarn to breathe and just feast your eyes. But um, I bought two things at this yarn store. Number one, I wanted to get some fingering weight yarn for mom, and I was looking for a cotton yarn, fingering weight, that would have a good range of colors so that you could um, ha go like from the light to the darks, but not be a harsh contrast. Like I wanted just subtlety because mom is very much into free form crochet right now and free, free form crochet portraits. And you know, sometimes to crochet faces and um, do shading in free form crochet, you need different shades of the same color. So I wanted, I was looking for that. Didn't really find it, but I did buy these. Um, this is Cotton Kona Fine, it's puppy yarns, um, 25 grams, 100% cotton. It's puppyyarn.com. I think that's another uh, brand or store in Japan because I did see a lot of puppy yarn in the different yarn stores. So I got like a beige skin tone color and then I got, I'm gonna call it a mulberry purple but I thought it would go very well with the beigey. And then I got a brown, which I thought led well from the mulberry purple because it had brown tones, but I am very aware these aren't like fading colors, but I thought they were good to have. And curiously enough, I think what attracted me to this is that the yarn doesn't appear to be plied. The yarn appears to be, I mean, just like two plies together. It appears to be chain plied. And I thought that was very interesting. And I was wondering what kind of texture it would produce with free form crochet, because I know that when you just crochet any other, any project, um, chain plied yarn looks really, really good in crochet. And of course, um, I bought more cotton. This time it's something, it's a brand that you all know very, very well. It is Regia. And if I'm not, <gasps> the yarn almost fell into the tea. It almost spilled the tea. Right, lame jokes aside. Regia is a German yarn and this is their cotton. It is 72% cotton, 18% polyamide, and 10% polyester. And it is very, very stretchy yarn. Now I bought this yarn to make a pair of socks for my husband because I told him that I would knit him or crochet him a pair of socks that would forever remind him of our trip to Japan. So he chose this color of regia. It is a... Uh, um, Hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So it is color 02414. Anyway, it is supposed to be self-striping with mottles of color, like some, um, mm, I'm gonna call it color bruising. I don't know if you can tell from the label, but it's got blues, creams, browns, and then like the modeling or the bruising that I'm talking about is also in browns and shades of like, I would say a caramely or mahogany brown. And I'm very excited. I really like Regia yarns and because 
to just don't you don't have to do anything except knit them and they look wonderful also since it's self striping i'm wondering if i should use um sandra's of cherry hearts her thunder struck socks i'll link them ones i mean down below i've knit them for my husband once before but uh, i'm tempted to knit them again because i really like them and i couldn't i couldn't resist i also bought another regia it's the same kind of cotton cotton color around the world i'm not so yeah this is cotton yarn from around the world so it's the same range but this one really reminded me of christmas and i was like oh christmas socks that i can use all year round i would probably make them shorties and also i'm sure they'd look great in my doc martens because i my husband preemptively as a birthday gift bought me doc martens to go on our trip to japan and i thought i had broken them in but boy oh also i always forget size eight in doc martens is way it's too big for me but luckily at the 100 yen store which is like the version of the dollar store they had the gel inserts that you put in the back of the heels for comfort and that is exactly the space that i needed to fill in so perfect so yeah, these are the two yarn stores that I visited in Osaka. If you find yourself in Osaka, I highly recommend both. As I said, I'm gonna leave the links with in the description box below. Unfortunately, I did not take any videos of the Mazuzakiya store because I was very afraid to ask for permission. If I'm in a store that I don't like to just take video without asking for permission. It's respectful and also some stores don't like it when you take videos, uh, not sometimes because they don't want you showing off the merchandise, but most of the time it's because inevitably, no matter how hard you try, other people will appear in your video and that's kind of like an invasion of privacy. So yeah, I was too afraid to ask if I could film a video. Um, I did learn the Japanese phrase for that and I don't remember it right now, but generally I would just literally go video okay and they would say hi or Sumimase ie and That's fine. Whichever one. That's fine Ooh. So that brings us to the end of part one of our yarn haul video now part two is going to fit feature Nara Tokyo and Ueno Tokyo. Yes, I did visit a lot more yarn stores. So until we meet again for next week's second yarn haul video, I wish you a good day or a good night and very, very happy crafting. Thank you so much for joining me today. And before you leave, I would like to once again remind you that there is a celebration cal going on and let me know if you are joining what project you are planning on making if you follow me on instagram this week i'm trying to get back into the instagram because i missed you guys i missed interacting with you guys and i know instagram sometimes is not the best place for that but until um we set up the crochet cakes discord that is what we got and i know that i've been alluding to the discord a lot and it's not set up yet and it's not because it's not there. It, it is there. I just haven't decided what roles I want to assign, how I want to split it up. And because it will definitely be split up, um, there will be sections that are for everyone and there will be sections that are for people that subscribe to my Ko-fi because if you do want to support my channel, you can always um, just watch the ads. You can go to my blog. It has ads, yes. You can purchase patterns. You can donate tip to my Kofi. And um, do let me know, by the way, if you support other creators on Kofi, do you support them to support them? Or do you want um, little things in exchange? Because what I am thinking of for people that subscribe to my Kofi is of doing a once a month podcast that's just for my Kofi subscribers and also I was thinking of little crafty videos that perhaps have nothing to do with crochet so just other fiber related crafts or other things that I like to do to include them for my Kofi subscribers and for those of you that are not aware Kofi is similar to Patreon I just think it's much easier to work with and you buy me a cup of tea 
I can't change it right now because I I've only had one um, donor so you kind of have to meet a mark before you can change buy me a coffee to buy me a tea or buy me whatever you want so yeah I'm waiting so that I can do buy me a tea because we all know that I drink tea and not coffee also before you guys leave um, other things that I was thinking of doing with my discord is um, whenever I'm in doubt of how to proceed with a pattern or what pattern to design next I thought I would do polls over there so that you guys can help me choose because this is our channel after all and I I enjoy sharing all sorts of crafts and things with you so yeah do let me know also I haven't had any questions but I've seen several people do craft room tour videos and I was wondering if you'd be interested in one of those so let me know again in the comments section below and thank you so much for spending a little bit of your crafty time with me today I hope that I've kept you company and that you've had a warm drink or a cold drink depending where you are in the world because we are headed towards summer so the iced teas will be coming out but yes but yes, I will see you again very, very soon. So happy crafting and goodbye.